In the previous video, I showed you how you can achieve quick and nice results using the bevel modifier when modeling the bookshelf component. In this video, I'll be showing you how to texture the model and from there, use the same mesh to make a couple of other assets. Hi, my name is Ken Liang and welcome to how to make a Dark Souls boss room. Before we begin, you will need to download this set of PBR texture images if you intend to follow along. The download link is in the descriptions below. Are you ready? Let's begin. First of all, let's switch to the shader editor and give our bookshelf a name for its shader. By pressing Ctrl Shift T, you can import all of the image textures for the same PBR material at once into the shader editor. Of course, you'll have to enable the Node Wrangler add-on first in order to do this. Afterwards, switch to the UV editor and start fixing the UV map for our bookshelf. I like to work on it part by part, and I find that projecting the UV from the front view like this works nicely. I'll use the top part of the texture for this part of the mesh. That being said, however you decide to map the bookshelf is entirely up to you, as long as it looks nice in the end. I'll do the same for the bottom part of the mesh. I think the box designs on the texture would go well with the middle part of the shelf. Here's how I would map it. And there we have it, a nicely textured bookshelf in under 3 minutes. Remember to rename the object, so that we can keep track of things easily later on. Duplicate the entire collection, and rename it to something like Tall Shelf. Hide the original shelf collection to get it out of the way for now. Start editing by selecting the book rack object and add an array modifier to add another stack of books on top. Then, modify the bookshelf object in edit mode to match the height of the book rack. To fix the stretch texture, add an edge loop in the middle and switch back to the UV editor to readjust the map. The reason for this edge loop is for us to map it in a way that allows it to mirror the texture in the middle. Now it looks much better. Hide the tall shelves collection and duplicate the original shelves collection again. This time, we need it for making the balcony component. As always, remember to rename your objects. Delete the book rack first. Also, 
delete the faces that we made to join the corners of the pedestal. Scale everything down along the x-axis and move them down like this. Continue editing the mesh until you have something that resembles mine. Do you see where this is going? Once you have something like this, select these faces here and duplicate them to the top to make the balustrade. Fill the gap to complete the face loop and adjust accordingly. At this point, we need to add in a cylinder in edit mode to make the baluster. Reduce the amount of sides to 16 and start editing it to how and where it should be. Instead of a boring cylinder, I like to add a little touch of design of my own onto the baluster. So feel free to do the same for yours too. No need to put too much detail though, as long as we give it an interesting silhouette along its height since they are viewed from afar anyways. When you are done, fix its UV in the UV editor. Then, press L on a baluster to select all linked faces and duplicate it to fill in the missing baluster. The balcony component is finished for now. I will show you how to use it when we import it into our main scene in another video after we are done with the other assets. In the next video, I will be showing you guys how to model the chandelier. Thank you for watching, save your file, and I'll see you in the next video.